Well, the time is finally here to discuss the second classic car in GT7 1.25, that being, of course, the KPGC 110 Skyline, the 2000 GTR. And I don't know about for you guys, but for me, this is one of those occasions where they've actually added yet another Skyline to the game, but it actually doesn't feel like that. It's not a duplicate, it actually is a genuinely different Skyline, and it always has been. One of the things that always intrigued me about this car, even as a kid playing Gran Turismo 4, is just how different it looks and feels and performs, even when compared to the far more famous 71 shape Skyline, which was already in the game. That car, I mean, let's say it as it is, is better than this immediately, even without any tuning. This one is definitely, at least for me, one of those classics that does need some fettling. In particular, suspension and the diff. Now, I alluded to this in my review of the update as a whole, but the car has zero across the board on its stock diff settings. So it may as well not even have a diff. <laughs> it's like driving a 1920s car where you can just lock up the wheels pretty easily. It can't really get the power down that well, doesn't turn particularly well. But when you fit the upgraded diff, drop the ride height as I have, I've slapped a race exhaust on there as well for the sound, it immediately starts to liven up and brighten up the car a little bit. It's working with a very modest amount of power as well. Sure, in 1973 it was pretty sporty, but these days 157 horsepower is lower end hot hatch territory, literally like a Suzuki Swift kind of thing, but it is very responsive to tuning. That's the good part. The not so good part is the price. Now, some people very kindly <laughs> tried to correct me in my review of the update by saying that, oh no, you must not know that the prices in the game in the Haggerty dealer are based on real life. And that's why they change, that's why some of them don't make sense. <laughs> I'm well aware of that. <laughs> I feel like most people are aware of that at this point. My point wasn't that I don't know why it's expensive. My point is that that price is stupid, <laughs> regardless of if it's in real life or not. Even in real life, in fact, especially in real life, that's a ridiculous price. In the game, even more so, because it kind of feels like they're just stretching the car's prices purely for the sake of it. There's an argument to be made for Haggerty being a cool idea, but in practice, it ends up kind of feeling like a bit of a wasted opportunity, or just an excuse to drag out gameplay and make you want to buy, you know, microtransaction-style, real money for fake credits kind of thing. That's by the by and a discussion for another time though. So with the price of 542,000 credits, it's pretty hefty. For a car with barely 150 horses, thankfully the weight isn't that bad. 1145 kilos, and the point level is very versatile given how low it is to begin with. 386 gives you a ton of room to work with. Even if you keep it up to the 400 level, certainly if you go to 450 or 500, you could do quite a bit to this. If you leave the tires lower level, if you focus in on giving it a little bit of a boost in power, upgrade the diff and the suspension, maybe even the brakes, you could have yourself a quite nice little track day classic. Even then though, at least for my standards, I still find the 71 shape to simply be a better car. So, the choice is yours really as far as which one you, you prefer, but I would have some caution in rushing to spend half a million on this thing if you're expecting it to be some dominating Skyline, because the name Skyline does carry that kind of status. All in all, I am glad that they added it to the game. I think it is a genuinely unique Skyline, and I actually have no problem at all, to be honest, with them adding this to the game. This is not a car I would complain about, despite the fact that it's not as good as the 71 in my opinion. I still don't think that's a reason not to include it. And yeah, I'm glad that they did. It is a legendary car from Gran Turismo, albeit a slightly less appreciated one, for the aforementioned reasons, compared to the older model, which is much more famous. But ultimately, yeah, this is probably my second highest ranked car from this update, behind of course the Maserati, and it is a genuinely unique vehicle at least, so you can't really complain about that. Ultimately, that's it for my thoughts on the KPGC 110 model. Give me yours down below, have you already bought it? Did you like the car? Have you found it to be useful for a particular event, or point level maybe, or a certain style of tuning? Maybe you've got yours as a drifter, for example, or a circuit car. Of course, let me know down below, and until next time, I'll see you then with the final review tomorrow for, of course, the one that we've all been waiting for, the new Mazda Miata.
But for now, as always, thanks for watching.